Okay. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our first Espresso Cyberbytes of the Year. You're very welcome here today. Um, I'm Alison Pellucci, and I am a member of the marketing team here at Trellix. Um, and shortly, my colleague Patrick McNamara will present the team of panelists today. Um, in the meantime, grab a coffee. We're going to be starting very, very shortly. And just before we start, just to remind you that this session is recorded. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them into the chat um, or raise your hand and we will try to come to them at the end if we have time. Um, otherwise, we will come back to you following on from this session. And before I hand over to Patrick, I also wanted to give a very warm welcome to Hannah Williams from Scribble, who will be illustrating uh, the panelists' um, discussion today. So uh, over to you, Patrick. Great. Thanks, Alison. Um, so we have 30 minutes today. What we want to, we have a lot to cover in that 30 minutes. What we want to do is basically introduce everyone to Trellix and then give everyone an overview of Suppose our strategy going forward and what it is Trellix will deliver. So we'll start with the introductions. So my own name is Patrick McNamara. So I'm a commercial sales cop manager at um, Trellix, formerly McAfee. Been with the company 18 years. Um, joined on the call today with, um, by my colleagues, Marcus and Srini. So Marcus, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Marcus Johansson. I uh, work as an inside sales rep covering Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. And I've been working at McAfee, now Trellix, for one year. And I will talk a little bit more about XDR, our definition, and uh, the capabilities, and also the, the benefits of using XDR. And leave it to Srini. Hi, everyone. Good morning. I'm uh, Srinivas Bogaram, uh, in short, Srini. Uh, I'm part of the pre-sales team, technical resource, based sort of Cork office. I'm with um, Trellix, McAfee, Intel Security for, for um, uh, 15 uh, years now. Happy to be with you today. Perfect, great. So Srini, if you want to move on to our, the next slide, great. So we've welcomed everyone to the webinar. So now let me uh, uh, welcome everyone to Trellix. So Trellix is the new name, which we will be uniting our two teams, McAfee Enterprise and FireEye under, and going forward under the name Trellix. So why we chose Trellix, um, there's a number of reasons. One, it signifies something unique, um, and it allow us to redefine and to grow our resounding story, which will be to redefine the cybersecurity and introduce a new era of cybersecurity. Also then, Trellix is an adaption of the word trellis, which for the gardening enthusiasts are amongst us, they'll know that that is a lattice-like structure and it's used for, to support the growth of plants, flowers, and trees. And the reason that's significant is because within Trellix, we believe that that is the same structure that our customers require in order to confident, confidently address the cybersecurity challenges that are facing us all. So, but this is not the only connection that we're going to have with nature or living organ, or organs, um, because the tagline under which we will be going forward with is living security. So what we mean by living security is a security platform that is able to learn and adapt as things happen. Say, for example, what if you had a platform that when a threat comes in, that it was able to learn from it and grow from it and adapt based on that threat? So instead of a threat being this big, bad thing, which it is, but you're, you take the lessons from that. Like in life, when we get knocked down, when we get knocked down, we get up again, we learn our lessons and we move on. That's the same principles which we want to apply to our cyber security platform. So Srini, if you go forward, the next slide. So main thing here, founded 2022. So we're the new kids on the block. We're the new cyber security company. But in truth, as you all know, we're not new. So Trellix is the result of the merger between McAfee Enterprise and FireEye. So that means that our combined strength 
in the market from the years that both companies have been operating in the market. Our combined strength means that we will be able to provide our customers with a platform that will literally mean you will be able to stand on the shoulder of giants. And our mission, as I already mentioned, it's simple, but it's critical, and it's to redefine cybersecurity. We're going to do this with our incredible expertise and our combined portfolio of products, which will be focused on advanced detection, response, and remediation. So cybersecurity is not a solo game, and we realize that. So we will also be open, and we're open to the level at the moment where we are able to ingest over 600 other um, um, security technologies. And this is the intelligence and the power which we are going to be putting into the hands of our customer. So we do already have a large portfolio of products, and that product portfolio of products will span across the endpoint, the network, messaging, data protection, and cloud service. So we have the platform to truly address the promise of XDR. So Shrini, if you just want to move on to the, the next slide, right? So what is XDR? We'll be covering that in the next slide, but it is XDR. So I, I've been with, in, in this industry with my formerly Matthew and Outrelix for 17, 18 years. And we often hear terms floating around from time to time. Um, and it is XDR just another one of these terms that we often hear floating around. What is it exactly? Um, but before we look at what it is, let's look at how we got here. What is it that has created this XDR market? And the first one, really, I suppose, when we look at these, we have them on the slide here as drivers. But what they are, in essence, is challenges. And these are the same challenges which we have been hearing from, from our customers for quite some, some time now. Um, same problems, the same challenges um, almost all customers are facing. The first one is the increasing tax surface. So technology is the lifeblood of every industry. No matter what industry you're in, no matter what uh, market you operate in, you are reliant on technology. And every single organization is looking at technology to increase efficiencies, to better reach their customers, to better, I suppose, enable their employees. How do we leverage technology to create advantages um, over our competition? Two examples here are personal devices. So when we use physical customers pre-COVID, well, two and a half, three years ago, um, I'd always ask about personal devices. Um, do you allow personal devices? How do you control personal devices? How do you track the usage of personal devices? The answer we would receive almost 99% of the time would be, no, we don't allow it. End of story. It's not allowed. Um, we block personal device usage. But what we've seen over the course of the pandemic, especially, is that the usage of personal devices has increased. And a lot of companies are choosing to allow that to continue into the future. Then another um, area that has I suppose, accelerated in the last few years is the usage or the use of cloud technologies. So Teams, for example, went up 300% during the pandemic, um, the adoption of Teams. So, a lot of companies looked to leverage cloud technologies. And again, like personal devices, it, it could have been something that might have been on the roadmap, but it was on the roadmap for maybe three, four years down the line. Once we've done all the assessments and looked at everything and really made an educated decision over it, then almost overnight, a lot of companies adopted these cloud technologies out of necessity. Business continuity was the primary driver. Now, the next um, driver that we're going to look at is um, threats moving downstream, more sophisticated threats moving downstream. So what we mean here is that nation state attackers have been there for quite some time. But what we have seen lately is that those techniques that are being used by the nation state uh, attackers, they're increasingly moving downstream. So those really sophisticated techniques. And then we've seen recently with the solar winds breach, solar winds breach where a nation state actually directly targeted private enterprises. So the message here is that good, the days of good enough security 
they're well and truly gone. Companies need an, uh, an eco, a security ecosystem that's able to learn and adapt and grow as threats evolve. So a, a recent survey, uh, no, no, no good presentation is complete unless you have some statistics. So a recent um, survey was conducted last year, a sense year um, conducted this study, and it was a CISO level study into the current state of cybersecurity. 81% of CISO respondents on that survey indicated that staying ahead of attacks was a constant concern for them. So that just indicates the way that things are going, sophistication of attacks. And the next driver then leads on from that sophistication, it's the volume of these attacks. When I first started, um, we had we used to see 50 malware samples per day. Now we're up to 418 malware samples per minute. So that's an incredible number. And it's an incredible number for security teams within companies to try and keep on top of, try to keep abreast of. And again, another statistic on a recent survey, 35% of security analysts admitted to ignoring alerts when their queue got too big. So that points back to the volume of alerts um, that they're getting um, and the volume of threats that are coming in um, to environments on a daily basis per minute, as I said, 418. That then leads on to the last driver, the fourth driver, which is um, the complexity in environments. So again, security teams are often to ignore alerts, but what's the cause of that? Is it just the volume of alerts coming in? There's also another side to that, and it's the level of security technologies that are deployed at the moment. A lot of companies have had a policy of adopting best of breed technologies. So you have a problem, problem A, how do we solve problem A? Let's go to the market, buy what we think is the best of breed solution to solve that problem. Okay, that problem solved, move on to problem B, problem C, so on and so on. Until the end, you, what you've built up is a large system of different um, technologies that aren't speaking to each other, aren't connected. You handed these to your security teams and they've got the headache of trying to manage all these different solutions. And last point in this is remember the bad actors, the bad guys, the hackers, whatever term you want to use, those guys are just looking for one little gap that you have um, that's, that's within your environment. The more technologies that you have deployed from the first driver, but the more security solutions that you have deployed also to, to help means that the chances of a, a gap being created are greater. So the potential for risk is greater. So at this point, what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a poll and I'm going to hand over the webinar to my colleague, um, Marcus. So um, if we want to um, move on and open up um, the poll, I think so. Okay, perfect. So you have a poll, a few, three questions. I wasn't too sure, was it was it two or three? Um, so we have three questions up there. If you wouldn't mind just taking the time, just populate um, the answers uh, from your perspective um, to those um, questions are there up. And we'll, we'll then address the results of that poll later on in the, the webinar. So what I'm gonna do now is hand over to my colleague, Marcus. And Marcus is gonna talk us through what is XDR and then how Trellix is going to address um, XDR. So Marcus, over to you. Thank you very much, Patrick. Um, I will continue this uh, presentation with XDR. There are a lot of definitions about what, what XDR is, and from our perspective, it's not a product. It's an architecture or a platform that unify and collect data and data alerts from several security layers, such endpoints servers, web, cloud, etc. And by filtering down this data, it will help organizations to better detect, contain, confirm and respond to uh, real-time threats, incidents and attacks. And why it's so important by, by using XDR? Well, like Patrick mentioned before in the previous slide, we see the, the threat landscape is increasing incredibly. And also that we see that uh, Gartner predicts now today that only 5% of organizations globally are using XDR in some form. But by 2027, they also say that the need and the expansion of XDR will be plus 4%. Uh, 
And that tells the question, why is, why is that? Well, to answer that, we, we see that the complexity today by having a lot of vendors, products, um, will, will, will be hard for organizations to have the control and visibility where the, the threats are happening. If you have two complex uh, products and, and, uh, and, and organizations, uh, it's going to be hard for you to have the right tool and pull out the relevant data and alert that is relevant for your organization. So we see that in this in this landscape that we when we are bringing two companies, Firand and McAfee as Prelix, we see that we, we can bring value to, to the market by adding those capabilities into one platform. By, by having one dashboard, helping organizations to, to correlate data and, and, and see it, predict, and, and be, be um, uh, up front and stay ahead from, from attacks from happening. And we see also that by having less complexity, it will re reduce the, the heavily staffed man companies if you have an organization that is monetizing and looking into threats on a daily basis. It will be easier if you also have um, uh, the, the tools that, that will help you to reduce operational costs as well as minimizing uh, time and, and also um, uh, threats that, that's happening from other organizations. So there, there's a lot of, uh, of capabilities within the XDR that will help organizations to be more up to date and upfront to stay ahead from all these advanced threats that, that is happening. So, so we, we, it will take time, of course, but we, we see that we have something to bring up to the table and we will gladly help organizations and partners and end users to, to have this, to be in the part of this journey that we are providing. So let's go to the next slide, please. So by helping our customers and end users to be successful and grow their business, there are basically three core principles that we, are, that we need to add and try to, 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 to work with. Uh, that is very important for us to, 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 to be successful in helping our customers. The first one is, uh, Patrick mentioned a little bit in, in the beginning about learning and adapting, which means that we as a company, we can't just only rely on our own solutions. We also need to see what's happening on the market. We need to adjust to the market. We need to adjust about what challenges that are happening today, tomorrow, but also in the future. By saying that, we also need to have the right tools that is uh, machine learning, AI, or other capabilities that might pop up in the future. So we need to just be listening to, to what's happening and also see what other type of capabilities that, that we need to, to, uh, to put in, in our uh, portfolio and platform. And the, the second pillar, native and openness, means that we need to be transparent with our customers, partners, and, 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 and vendors out there. We have over today 600 type of integration that can be correlated into our platform. So you as a end user don't need necessarily to, to, to replace something. You can add XDR on top on your, on your exi existing platform and be able to have these capabilities that, that I talked about earlier. So it's very important for us as a company to help other uh, vendors and also have this co collaboration with partners that, that, that we can uh, focus on our mission is to, to stay to help our customers to stay protected as much as possible. So we need to have this seamlessly integrated solution and, and be open to, to and have native uh, collaborations um, with other partners also. And, and finally, this, the third pillar is that in order to have all these uh, transparency and, and be able to, to, to offer these capabilities, it's very important for us to have relevant and, and real-time um, insights uh, that we are collecting from our uh, globally telemetry um, uh, threat labs. We have today over 1 billion sensor, sensors globally that we pull in the data and, and, and can put that into our products and solutions that is uh, currently uh, out there. So we can help customers and end users to, to see what ki kind of campaigns that are happening out there what kind of threats that are happening, what's need to be done, uh, done, how to, to stay protected in best way, and also see how we can correlate, correlate, correlate that to, to, to real-time uh, data and uh, next steps and action points. 
And with that said, I will leave it over to Srini that will go me into deeply what XDR can help organizations with. Thanks, Marcus. Um, hi, everyone. I want to take uh, one step down into a little bit of an architecture and give you a glimpse of how what we're talking about with respect to technology, right? So before that, I wanted to get one thing out of the way, which is uh, what is XDR not? Uh, what it is not, right? So it is uh, essential to know what it is, but it is also good to know what it is not, right? So because there's so much of confusion created in the industry today by so many vendors, um, XTR has been used uh, as a as a terminology for anything and everything. Um, the, the, the vendors are in a uh, in a hurry to go and acquire multiple different technologies to complete their XTR story, right? So to be clear, it's not. Um, it's not a product, right? It's a platform, as Marcus was saying. It's it's a platform. Um, it's it's rather than a single product. So you saw one of the quotes from Gartner. This is the other one. I, I found this very interesting because they, they clearly call out this as um, uh, of course it is um, a sim and a sore together, but how is it different? It's not it's not a sim, right? So it's not a sim solution, but it is kind of a sim and a sore. Um, which can in, uh, ingest threat intelligence coming from multiple different threat vectors, integrating different products, and especially the call out here is on the detection and response. Detection of threats on a timely fashion and responding to them in a, in a, in a, in a, in a proactive fashion so that you can go and contain or protect um, uh, yourself. And then they are also calling out here, SIM is successful technology. We all know that for a couple of decades. So many enterprises have been using it. It is successful, but mostly it is used as a log storage um, and, and compliance rather than um, uh, to, to detect threats and then and, and then help um, remediate, triage those uh, those threats. Uh, and and if you if you recall about a decade ago or maybe plus a uh, decade plus ago, uh, the promise from SIM technology was supposed to be this, right? So uh, ideally, SIM supposed to be the XDR solution, what we're talking about today, but it didn't really happen. But then now we have uh, XDR. Just to bring all of this into a, into a perspective, that's, let's say that's the, the, the XDR technology we're talking about, the framework. Um, why is it different? Uh, let me build this first. Uh, it is ingesting threat intelligence, what, what you heard Marcus talking about it, you heard uh, Patrick talking about it, ingesting threat intelligence coming from uh, different sources. And it is exclusively called as extended. Extended to what? It, it extended to EDR, endpoint detection and response. Extended beyond EDR is, is XDR, extended uh, detection and response. So basically this is the EDR capability and, and, and this is the SIM capability, if you will know. Um, these are post logs, basically post-mortem, that's why I'm calling it as RIP. Um, you know, the, 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 the applications, what, what you're uh, basically using in, in your um, uh, applications or services and other things, they keep writing into logs, right? So um, anything, everything is done on the application um, is being written into the logs that gets ingested, but whereas, um, the EDR is different. This is trace. This is how things are happening right now. If there is a process kicked in on the system, um, you know the tree, right? It, it creates something, it deletes something, it hooks onto something, creates a registry, um, creates a file. So, so the entire process tra trace is basically what is part of the EDR. That is the endpoint detection and response. This is live. This is not log. This is not post quantum information, this is live information. So that's the difference between a, a, a traditional SIM versus um, an XDR, right? So we're getting in this information from multiple different threat vectors, plus we're bringing in um, the threat intelligence itself. Uh, you, you saw the three buckets Marcus was talking about. Um, the first one is the engine itself. The middle portion is basically the, the, the log ingestion from native as well as um, open and the intelligence, which is fed into this so that we can detect threats and come out with remediation recommendations um, with a list of detections. And this is how you will, you will fix it and hold and, and guide you through how do you fix it step-by-step? Step. How do you um, enrich 
some of these uh, detections, probably look up um, uh, something into, into virus total or a sandbox to see if it is really bad or not. So enriching the information or go and take a remediation action, really quarantine the endpoint or remediating any of those um, threats, what we're seeing. So if you if you compare this with um, the, the regular security guard, right, in, a, in an office, um, you will see a guard in the, the front of the door um, is pressing, pressing through the, the people getting in, scanning with the metal detectors and all that, opening up all the baggages and everything and checking airports and everything what we have seen, right? So that is something like a real time, whereas um, post logs are like a, um, security cameras, you know, you can't really do much. It's already done. You can only use it as a reference guide, right? So it's something like that. So just to give you a perspective of how um, where XTR really fits, there's a lot of misconceptions um, in the industry today, but this is what um, the leading uh, third-party analysts talk about um, XTR, and that's exactly what, what we are doing um, with, with Trellix. Um, another representation of uh, the same kind of an architecture, uh, bringing in um, the intelligence and the engine itself. This is the first bucket, right? And ingesting threat intelligence, this is the, uh, um, the, the EDR components coming in from, um, uh, from, from EDR, um, uh, endpoint detection and response, applications feeding into it, um, collaboration tools like Teams and, and you know, uh, other collaboration tools, um, and the data and the user itself. If, if let's say you have users on Azure or, or anywhere else, so the user context itself feeding into it, infrastructure, it could be your uh, egress points, uh, could be web and it could be um, uh, IPS, it could be anything else which is on the network side feeding into it. And of course, the cloud definitely it is a big piece of any enterprise today uh, because of um, pandemic. I mean, like, pandemic is a reason, but, it, but it's accelerated um, transformation to the cloud. So um, everything with respect to the, 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 the cloud itself feeding into this, um, all of it to help detect those anomalies and threats um, with the context of multiple different threat vectors and, and help you triage and, and get to the, to the root of the, of the threat itself. So that's, that's a high level architecture. I have one more perspective of this architecture in a second. Before that, I just wanted to show uh, when, when Marcus said native, um, we're talking about the combined uh, security controls from McAfee Enterprise and FireEye as Astralix now, bringing in our technologies. And some of this are familiar to you. Um, you may be using some of this already in your enterprise. Um, and, and, and like uh, I mentioned EPO, um, or Helix is coming from the FireEye side of uh, the business. Um, so, so that is the classification under cloud. So if you classify the, 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 the security controls, which sits in the cloud, delivered out of the cloud, for the cloud, right? And the other one, which is on the uh, device itself, like, like ENS, it could be um, the EDR agent from um, Helix, or it could be an IPS device or a DLP, which is sitting on the device itself, which is on the endpoint or the server or on the infrastructure side of things. So um, the core products, which brings in the native portion of uh, the middle bucket, which, which Marcus was talking about, that is uh, coming from all of this, plus, we have 600 plus non trellix partner solutions, non-partner solutions feeding into this. So uh, the more you feed into um, the, the XTR engine, the better it is. Uh, it, it, it enriches, it gives you the context of, um, um, uh, of, of uh, the, the detecting threat itself. For example, in, this is another representation of the same architecture, just to give you a perspective of looking at the XTR in the right direction. Um, Helix, um, it, is, it is still in, in some fashion or the other, some uh, flavors of, of FireEye there. It's not been completely uh, rebranded into Trellix, but architecture-wise, control-wise, I think it, it, it gives you an idea. This is the core engine itself, the, the, the Simon SOAR platform, the, 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 as, a, as a platform, um, EDR feeding into this, um, endpoints feeding into this, network feeding into this, cloud advisory is kind of a CASB solution, which is feeding into this, sandboxing solution feeding into this, our threat intelligence lab in information itself, research lab itself is feeding into this. And this is exactly what I was talking about, the 600 different other, 600 or dot, um, non-Trellix 
uh, solutions what you already may have feeding into this, right? So that's where um, the detection gets narrowed down, very accurate when you have the context to look at um, the, the threat itself. I just want to share a glimpse of how the solution looks like, you know, so I didn't want to just show uh, only the architectural very high level structure, um, a dashboard which um, lists down all of those um, um, undetected threats, anomalies. Um, I'm, I'm cutting short here a little bit. I'm, I'm looking at the poll and I see more than 70% of you saying uh, lack of skills. You don't have enough skills and experience. And that's exactly where we are going to help you with. Um, when you don't need to go through each and every threat vector, analyze it yourself, plug it into yourself, can correlate yourself. We'll give you something which is easy to digest. Um, you can quickly jump into one of this and start looking at, let's say, the first one. I, I click on the first one. I'll open up with the details on, uh, if you see here, uh, we have three different threat vectors being uh, identified in this attack. Uh, one of them is endpoint, network, and email. So um, if you look at the, 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 the tools itself, network security, email, and endpoint. So, so that's the contributing to this. Different sources, different artifacts into this. So you could click on each one of those. Let me go to the next slide. And, and you can expand to see the, the, the um, artifacts which are contributing to this particular attack here. And I select any one of these, um, I, it will automatically link these artifacts together to show how it has been related. Uh, this particular destination IP address, talking to this particular uh, user, getting into the system, you know, so, so it, it's gonna create a virtual connection to give you a perspective of where and, and what. So uh, with respect to remediation part, right? So I can select the endpoint and, and probably contain that, quarantine that endpoint and take kind of a remediation action. Or I could select triage, take me through the playbook. I can give you a list of all the playbooks available out of the box. You can simply select and say, disable that user on uh, Azure. Or um, uh, check the hash on um, um, uh, virus total. It could be on uh, uh, a sandboxing solution, on-demand scan, on-demand um, um, uh, 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 detection. Uh, or it could be anything what you define yourself. You can customize and define those, those playbooks. So it becomes very easy for you to trigger some of those manual and automated activities and actions and remediations um, to, to, to triage and, 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 um, and get rid of the, the threat. And you can go back and see um, if the remediation playbook is complete or not. How many stages in that particular triage um, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, playbook has been completed, how many yet to be completed, uh, where is it stuck, do you have to intervene to finish this, what is the result of that particular action taken, so you can go back and check the remediation steps as well. So it is, it is um, just want to give you a glimpse of how it looks like. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, enhancements made with uh, bringing in these two security chains together. Um, you will see a lot of great work going into this um, in, in, in the coming time. Um, I'm going to hand it over back to Marcus at this point. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Rini. Um, like, like you heard now, we've been talking a lot about Trellix, and what we didn't mention is that we have one, one business area that is called SSE now, that's mainly focusing on the cloud cloud components, uh, like Rini showed you a little bit a glimpse of about the CASP, CNAP, uh, SWIG, uh, cloud DLP, et cetera. And uh, in a couple of weeks from now, that, that business area will be separated from the SDG, our mother company, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to a new company. So I just want to highlight it that, that that's why uh, it, it's here. But we, we still have the partnership and we still can have this open and native uh, relations and, and uh, integrations with, with SSE. So if, if you are interested in also um, integrating other capabilities, then from the Trellix side, we can also do that, no, no problem. I just want to highlight it. Uh, if you move up to the next slide, please. I also want to mention uh, before now that we have a, a lot of uh, interesting reports that we like to show you and I like to, to, to send out, send out some, some links that you can go into and look at what we have talked about today about the, the, the expanding landscape in, threat, in threats. So that's very important to have to have in mind now, especially when 
when we're looking at the Ukraine, for example, uh, new threats are happening over there. So it's very important to be updated as much as possible. So we'd like to share you with a couple of links uh, where you can go down and, and see by yourself. And if you have any questions, of course, we, me and Sprini or Patrick can, uh, will be able to, to come back to you with, with some feedback on those. And it would be nice to see now if we can see what the poll results have resulted in now uh, to see it. And when looking at this, it's kind of a, in the top lead, I will see that the lack of people and skills will be one of the main factors that why people maybe uh, not addressing XDR in, 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 at the moment. And I see also that one of the highlighted is that managing the volume of security alert is, is a big problem. Uh, for example, in the third one, no enough budget to operate uh, for operational tools. So those top three are the, the main uh, topics now, what I can see in the poll. So that, that leaves us a, a good uh, foundation to, to start talking about these um, challenges that are happening. Uh, and, and we are more than, than open to, to have that discussion further and deeper with you uh, after this, this session, of course. Um, and let's see what else can we show you. I think, Alison, do, do you want to um, go to um, Hannah on the um, or on our social media? Perfect. Thanks, Patrick. Um, yes, Hannah, we'll move quickly over to Hannah, um, where we may be able to see the scribe summary from this morning, and we will also be sharing this with you um, alongside the recording for everybody who's attended. Beautiful, Hannah, a real great description of what we stand for within um, as part of the Trellix brand and our vision um, as shared with you today, as well as uh, detailed messaging on XDR. So really looking great. Um, thank you, Hannah. Um, and just before we, we close, obviously, thank you for, for staying over for all of, all of you who have stayed longer. Um, just to remind you that you can keep up to date on Trellix news and updates and insights um, in cybersecurity on our channels, our Twitter and uh, LinkedIn channels. Um, so we'd love to see you there um, for, more, for more news. Um, and that's that's coming to the end of our session. Um, we'd just like to thank you. Um, Alison might have lost connection there. Um, so in case it's um, it's on all side. Thanks um, to everyone for, for joining the webinar. Um, if you do have any questions or any concerns or any challenges that you want to discuss with us, feel free to reach out to your account manager um, within Trellix or your reseller partner. Um, please do make contact with us. We're more than happy um, to have any discussions with you. Um, we like to take a consultative approach. So please reach out as they, um, and we'll assist you in, in every, way, every way that we can. And I, I'm not too sure, did, did we mention the social media platform? Sorry, I can't remember if we, if we mentioned that or not. Um, please follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, all the usual so social media platforms also. Um, I think there was a slide there with Okay. Thank we'll, you very much. We'll wrap up the, the webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Did it close? No, you can still see. Yeah, I'd say we, I'd say we probably leave maybe if we want to be filmed. Um, I think we pause, stop recording. Mm -hmm.